high-speed rail is a big project. It's going to pump hundreds of millions of dollars into the Los Angeles economy, and it's going to be paid for. 100 miles of unelectrified track somewhere in the Central Valley is not a need or a priority of the state right now. I'm a farmer. We're very common sense people. We don't start a project we know we can't finish. And what's upsetting to me as, as a taxpayer, as a citizen, is when they take upon themselves to start a project they don't have the money to finish. There's no indication that Congress is going to provide the rest of the money to finish the project. And they want to come over here and tear through all this prime agricultural land and then leave it not half done, a tenth done, unfinished, and everybody will walk away and we'll just be stuck with a mess. Tonight, California's controversial high-speed rail plan, the clash between what we voted for in 2008 and what we're facing in 2012. Good evening, everyone. I'm Phil Schumann. You can hear the passion in that farmer's voice. We've talked to people up and down the state, for and against, and tonight, in this Fox 11 special, we try to find out, is high-speed rail money well spent, or are we all being taken for a ride? I'm joined by our investigative producer, Heidi Kuda. She's been following the money on high-speed rail, asking tough and serious questions about how they're using the billions they already have and where the rest of the tens of billions that will be needed will come from. Heidi? All right. With so much at stake and so many questions to be answered, we start with the money. The California High-Speed Rail Authority's own estimates reveal a minimum cost of $68 billion. What, ha what they have in pocket is $6 billion, which is being spent in the Central Valley. We asked the Rail Authority's Chairman Dan Richard how they plan to finance the rest of the project. Dan Richard is asked this question all the time. So where is the additional money going to come from? It's going to come from private sector investment. The chairman of California's high-speed rail authority is confident he can get more money. We anticipate that at a certain stage of the project, not yet, but at a certain stage, it will trigger private sector investment that we estimate between 11 and 20 billion dollars uh, to come in and help build out the rest of the system. But critics say they're never going to get to that certain stage that triggers private investment because there's not enough cash right now to get there. Venture capitalist Michael Brownrigg says the rail authority has known this for years. They've been told by the private sector this is not investment grade. In other words, with the money they have now, they won't be able to do enough to show that it's a good investment. And they actually interviewed people in the private sector and they interviewed finance people and the finance people said we wouldn't make this investment unless you promise to pay us back that's a guarantee brown rig is part of this brain trust a group that includes professors economists and ceos they've all been studying california high-speed rail for years their big concern without more money the los angeles to san francisco bullet train taxpayers were sold will only be a track with no cars in the central valley there is no more money so anything beyond that expenditure at this moment is pure bluff. But Dan Richard is optimistic. What we're talking about is an initial public investment. And then under our business plan, we would sell the right to operate the system to a private sector operator. They would write the taxpayers of California a check for the privilege of doing that. Michael Brownrigg says the only thing he knows for sure. It's a bad investment. That's, that's the part that gets me the most. If you make an investment, you ought to get a return. And this is a lousy, there is no return on this. So Dan Richard, as you said, has asked this question over and over again, and there's a basic disagreement over what will materialize in the future. His thinking is if we build it, they will come, they being private investors. Absolutely. He also thinks that he can actually go to the federal government at some point, that this will be so enticing that they will be able to then say, hey, look, invest in us again. We have blown in dozens of calls to the Federal Rail Authority. They said there is no more money for this project. So that's obviously an issue. So it's a gamble, essentially. Essentially. What's very interesting is three governors actually returned stimulus money. So two governors returned stimulus money for rail plans, another for a tunnel, New Jersey, Wisconsin, and uh, Florida. And Florida. They said, we don't want to start down this no. road because we know we're not going to be able to finish no, it. No, no. And if California was flush with money, then, you know, I, I love Dan Richard. I love listening to what he has to say. He's so optimistic. And I love that optimism. That is so key to the core of California. It's 2012. It's not 2008. 
2008. Right, because he says that all large-scale infrastructure projects are built in stages. In the past, money has been available, but now it's a different economic climate, right? Absolutely, and let's just talk about that for a second, because let's even look at the Bay Bridge right now. The estimate to repair the Bay Bridge after the 1989 quake was just a couple hundred million dollars. Now, however many years later, it's six and a half billion. So we need to be very concerned right now about the money that we're spending here in this state on this project. Which is why we're doing this, right? Which is why we're doing this, absolutely. All right, and let's continue on the subject of money. Uh, it's important to to note that the current estimate of $68 billion, we're talking about that for the whole project, is actually the Rail Authority's low cost estimate. So Heidi's been looking into that number. Tell us what that's about. Okay, so when voters passed the High Speed Rail Act in 2008, they were told the total cost would be about $43 billion. Then it swelled, uh, swelled up to $100 billion before the Rail Authority pared it back down by incorporating existing rail into the plan. The Rail Authority doesn't dispute any of this. They admit a high and a low range, with $68 billion as the low-cost option and almost $80 billion as the high-cost option. A spokesman for the Rail Authority says so far in choosing the hybrid alignment for Merced to Fresno, no, the authority chose the least expensive alignment, which so far puts it on target for $68 billion. Okay, so, so people that aren't following the nuts and bolts of this, it's uh, approximately 800 miles from L.A. to San Francisco. High-speed rail was supposed to be new dedicated track. Now we're going to, existing tracks will be used in L.A. and San Francisco. We're going to build a non-electrified track in the middle of the state from Merced to Fresno that that was in reference to. Right. And then we're going to connect it eventually down the road. So, look, when you remodel your house, you know it's never going to cost what the estimate is. So we all figured that. Right. So is that bad, that the estimates will change? Uh... Well, it's never good, right? And let's just explain that hybrid alignment so people understand that. They had three different routes they were looking at in the Central Valley, and they chose one that parallels existing rail lines, and there's also, uh, it, it parallels the 99. Right. So that's the, and they also found some civic leaders in that area that actually supported the rail, because obviously when you're coming in and you're tearing up farmland on something that most people thought in California was going to parallel the five. The five, right. Even when you talk to those farmers who you spoke with, who voted for it, they voted for something they thought was going to be going up the five, not, you know, in the middle right. of well, their the, ag land. The route wasn't clearly spelled out back in 2008 or studied in that much detail. I mean, we're here in Southern California. Do I worry about a farmer's vineyard or crops in Madeira, not necessarily, but they sure do. Well, and also we need to worry about it because we are the taxpayers who are paying for paying this for project. It, yeah. And the question that we are going to continually ask throughout this project is, will it make it to Los Angeles? All right, and so to fully understand high-speed rail, we had to take a trip to Ground Zero, and that's what we did, the Central Valley. That's where ground is scheduled to be broken in the first quarter of next year for this project. It is happening. And it's also where the passion and the pain from this project has many people upset and frustrated. We want to forewarn you people, the way we're getting treated and the way the decisions that were made are so wrong. When they get to your area, there's nothing you can do. They will barrel through you.